Uh, my name is Johnny Moore. I'm a Liberty University alumnus, a friend of the university, and it's my, my privilege to be your guest host this morning. Uh, thank you all for gathering here at such a short notice for what is a major institutional announcement. Uh, we're joined in the room uh, today uh, by members of the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, by university executives, our provost and vice provost, deans, NCAA head coaches, and many longtime friends and family, along with alumni and donors, and of course, some students. Uh, we, we've invited you here this afternoon because today is a historic uh, day. And uh, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you an American hero. Evangelist Tim Lee gave his legs to defend America's liberty. He has given his life to preaching about the liberty available to all people through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for 30 years, he has given his time selflessly to train champions for Christ at liberty in various capacities, but especially as a member of the Board of Trustees, now as chairman of the Board of Trustees, please join me in welcoming Evangelist Tim Lee. Well, thank you, uh, Johnny Moore. Thank you so much. And it's such an honor to be here today. This is uh, a historic day uh, in the history of, of Liberty University. We've just concluded uh, two days of our annual spring uh, meeting of the Board of Trustees, and we have some exciting uh, and very, very important news to announce. During our meeting, the trustees unanimously appointed uh, Major General Dondi Costin, PhD, you'll hear more about his resume in a few moments, as the sixth president of Liberty University. And we... <laughs> and we're also extremely proud to announce that we also uh, nominated, elected Pastor Jonathan Falwell as the third chancellor of Liberty University. <laughs> but both of these votes were unanimous. Both leaders will assume their duties ahead of the 2023-2024 school year. These appointments by the trustees come after an extensive national search was conducted on behalf of the university's presidential and chancellor search team uh, by uh, Carter Baldwin, executive search, one of America's top uh, executive recruiters. The search involved the evaluation of nearly 100 credible candidates over a period of eight months. Selection by the trustees of a national executive recruiter clearly demonstrated Liberty's commitment to excellence and its determination to work with the absolute best advisors to help us identify the right leaders to guide Liberty University into our future. With Carter Baldwin's objective help, we look near and far, and we're certain we have found the right leaders and at the right time for the future of Liberty University. We believe God sent these leaders to us for such a time of this. As this, in the board meeting, there was more than one person referred to it as a, a spiritual time. It was a, like a time of revival for us in, in, in these last two days. The combination of President Costin and Chancellor Falwell will bring the gravitas and experience necessary to lead the university exceptionally well and with perfect cultural alignment. They will ensure Liberty University remains focused entirely on training champions for Christ to impact the world in every vocation. Let me take this opportunity to Thank again to all of our advisors, friends, alumni, and the candidates. But I especially today want to thank two people. First, I want to thank Margie Tenney, the wife of our longtime board member, Bud Tenney, and the late chairman of our search committee. Where is Margie? Right. Hold up your hand. Margie, would you mind standing? I want the folks to thank you on behalf of Bud Tenney. These, this is a very, very special lady. Many of you are aware that Bud went home to be the, with the Lord uh, just a short time ago. It was right after um, uh, the search committee had completed its work. 
and I, I, I'm heartbroken that he's not here today, but I, I do believe that he's looking on. I, I don't know how all that works out, but I do believe that there is a great cloud of witness today that's looking down and seeing what is happening here, but we are so honored, Margie, to have you with us here today. And finally, today, I want to thank my wonderful dear friend, Dr. Jerry Prevo. Um, the appointments that today will mark the formal transition of Jerry Prevo from the position of president to president emeritus. And again, we, uh, we made this uh, selection unanimous by the board of trustees as well. And uh, Liberty University could not have asked for a more competent, wise and principal leadership over these critical transitional years than it has received from President Jerry Prevo. His exceptional tenure as ten interim president has been marked by record enrollment, a refocusing of the university on its original mission, and its institutional reforms, which will provide uh, effective governance of Liberty University going forward. And most importantly, he has zealously protected the original mission and vision. We are so very, very grateful for his leadership these past few years. Please join me in welcoming him to the podium today and thanking our fifth president, Dr. Jerry Prevo. Thank you, Chairman Lee. Thank you for those undeserved words of appreciation. But uh, it's been an honor for me to be here and serve during this time. Uh, it's been a, a great joy for me and my wife to be here, to meet as many of you as possible, and also to get acquainted with this great student body. That's probably, I took our trustees over to Convo today. And the reason being is I said to our trustees, I said, you know, we sit here in this meeting, we pass budgets, we look at resolutions, we do all of that, but we need to go over and see what Liberty University is all about. So we went over as a trustee board and saw the student body and it was impressive. And I think it blew the socks off of our new president that's coming up, all right? That's an old country phrase, all right, for a hillbilly. A few hours ago, the board unanimously voted to ask Pastor Jonathan Falwell to become the chairman of our university, or not the, the chancellor of our university. He brings to the university an invaluable depth of, depth of personal experience. He's also, he's a twice an alumnus of Liberty University, he holds a Juris degree and doctorate. And in addition to his church ministry, Pastor Falwell has been a successful entrepreneur, an author, and a widely published photographer. I remember the first time I saw him, he was running around with a camera, <laughs> taking pictures. How many of you remember that? Yeah. Amen. And so he's a commercial pilot also. And so today, we're happy to announce to you that he is going to become our next chancellor. He and his wife, Sherry, have been married 31 years. They have four children, three are married, and they have two grandchildren, and they're looking forward to many, many more. Right? <laughs> Please welcome today Chancellor Jonathan Falwell. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Prevo. It's an honor to be able to serve this institution that I love. I'm one of the few people in the room that have been around here when this university, when these buildings, when these facilities, when they did not exist. And I've had the opportunity, the privilege, and it is a privilege to be able to watch as God has raised this place up from nothing to a place that today impacts and changes the world. And we today, through our board, through our committees, through all of us, we've had the opportunity of having this conversation. We once again have reaffirmed our commitment to make sure that this university will never sway away from being distinctively Christian, training champions for Christ, changing the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ, standing on the inerrancy and the infallibility of Scripture, that it comes from God and God alone, that we're the reason we're here, and we are going to work until Christ returns to make sure this place never moves from that position.
And we have been blessed with great leadership in the future, in the past, but we're going to be blessed with great leadership in the future as well. Don DeCostin is uh, an incredible man. When you look at his resume, it makes all of us feel woefully inadequate. Uh, having for the last five years served as the president of Charleston Southern University and while serving there at Charleston Southern, uh, enrollment has climbed, giving has climbed, and because of his successes there with his team, with his faculty, uh, with his students, that in the Charleston region, that even now Charleston Southern is ranked as the number one place to work in all of the Charleston area, much of it because of the leadership of this man prior to his time there at Charleston Southern. He served for 32 years in the United States Air Force, having uh, ultimately reached the rank of Major General, which for those of you who don't know the military ranking system, that's a two-star general, which means that's a big deal. He became a two-star general. He served for 26 of those 32 years uh, as a chaplain under the Liberty Baptist Fellowship, connected with us all the way through. He then became the chief of chaplains of all of the Air Force. Prior to his time in serving our country, he graduated from the United States Air Force Academy. He went on to get his first master's degree uh, from Liberty University. Good choice. Well done. <laughs> he got his master's of arts of counseling here. He went on to get his master's of arts of religion here. He then went on in the military world, and he got two more masters uh, in military operations and strategy from the Air College uh, at uh, one of the Air Force bases that serve our great nation, and then ultimately went on to get his Doctor of Ministry to get degree uh, from Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, after getting his Master of Divinity from Southwestern Bible Seminary. And then he got a PhD from Southern Seminary in Louisville. And in case you have not been paying attention or keeping track, that's five master's degrees, two earned doctorate's degrees, two-star general, and a five-year college president. There comes in the woefully inadequate of all of us in the room. <laughs> and all along the way, he's had his dear wife, Vicki, right by his side, and God has blessed and used them in immeasurable ways. And I firmly believe that while God has done incredible things in the past, God's work is yet ahead. The greatest work is yet ahead of what God is going to do in and through him as he serves here at Liberty University. The one thing that we as a board have been praying for over these last several years, talking about the leadership that we would have one day, and we prayed specifically, the board would talk about this, that we prayed for someone who would be highly qualified, we prayed for someone who would be committed, strong, committed in their Christian faith and in their walk, but also someone who was not only aware of our mission, but embraced our mission. And when we prayed that prayer over and over and over again, what God did, as God often does, Chairman Lee, is he answered our prayer in an Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 way. He did exceedingly abundantly more. And that is is what Don DeCostin brings to Liberty University in the days to come. And so in a moment, I'm going to have the privilege of, of asking General Costin to come to this platform and speak to you. But before I do, I'm going to ask President Prevo to come to share some thoughts, because as we uh, begin to turn the reins over to this man to serve as our president, I think our current president has a few words that he'd like to share. Thank you. Dr. Costin, would you please come and join me here at the podium. This uh, Liberty Seal was on the front of the pulpit of Dr. Falwell, our founder, since 1981. Wow. Jonathan allowed me to hold this today, but he said immediately when I got through with it, he was going to grab it and make sure that he got it back. Right. All right. You can borrow for 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes. That's all I have today. And uh, so Dr. Falwell stood behind that pulpit year after year saying that Liberty University was all about training champions for Christ. And that has been the thing that this university has been doing year after year after year. It was a few, about three years ago, I was asked to come and fill in as interim president. And I came here knowing Dr. Falwell since the early 70s, actually. And uh, someone asked me, what was my vision for Liberty University? 
And they asked me that question right after I had shown the video of Dr. Falwell and his vision. And he asked me, he said, when are you going to share with us what your vision is? What brand are you going to put on the university? And I said to this uh, professor, I said, didn't you watch the video of Dr. Falwell? He said, yes. I said, that's my vision. I'm here to keep that vision alive and to keep it going. And I hope I've been successful at that. So I was asked about three years ago to come and serve as interim president. As Chairman Lee said, uh, I came and uh, about last August, I said, you know, I think it's time for us to find a president. And so our search committee began to search and our commission as a search committee was defined, as Chancellor Falwell said, a well-qualified, an able, and willing person to become the next president of Liberty University. A few hours ago, the board family of Liberty University voted unanimously to ask Dr. Koskin if he would accept our ask to come and be the next president of Liberty University. So Dr. Koston, I want to ask you, will you accept the board's ask? I will, sir. Challenge accepted. All right. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Prevo. Uh, as, as a Liberty alum twice, uh, I want to say on behalf of all of us, how grateful we are that for the last three years, when you didn't have to come out of retirement, that you did. You did for this purpose, and we are extremely proud and grateful for all that you have done. Uh, and so, um, Evangelist and Chairman Tim Lee, thank you for becoming my friend over the last uh, few months. Uh, I, 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 I cannot be more grateful. I could not be more proud. I could not be more thankful, not just for your service uh, to the country, uh, but for your service to this university, uh, and I'm so grateful. And I cannot uh, explain to the board how grateful I am that uh, you have entrusted Vicki and me with this, uh, with this incredible opportunity. We are so looking forward to, to, to being here. And Chancellor Falwell, thank you very much uh, for taking the mantle. I look so forward to being your wingman. Uh, you're a pilot. I'm from the Air Force. We know what wingman's all about, so I'm looking forward to that happening. And Vicky, uh, Vicky has been uh, with me every step of the way. And uh, if uh, if she hadn't said yes way back when, and hadn't kept saying yes uh, time after time after time, uh, I would not be standing here today. So Vicky, I loved you. I'm so grateful for who you are, uh, and look forward to you uh, being alongside uh, us as we do this uh, thing here together at Liberty University. Now. Everything that was said by Chancellor Falwell after the words United States Air Force Academy, none of that would have happened were it not for Liberty University. I was called to the ministry uh, as a second lieutenant. And as a second lieutenant, uh, this, was, this was well before there was such thing as an internet. There was no such thing as online education. But, but Liberty University had figured a way out to very early on in an innovative way how to help military members like me who couldn't go to the greatest university on the planet to be educated there. They found a way for the education to come to us. Uh, and so I would not be here today had I not sat under the tutelage of some great professors from Liberty University, much of which happened in my living room because of the innovative ways that Liberty University has always been at the forefront. God in his providence uh, allowed me to finish a Master of Arts in Counseling degree. And then, although I'd promised Vicki that um, after we got married in her hometown, that, uh, th that uh, we'd be there for two more years the Air Force Personnel Center did what, did what the Air Force Personnel Center always does. They say, how do you know that an Air Force Personnel Center uh, officer is lying to you? Their lips are moving. <laughs> and what they said to me about two months before we got married was, they said, yeah, you're going to be here for two more years. And so I said to Vicki, we're going to get married. We're going to be here for two more years. And uh, two months later, I got orders uh, to, to Virginia, which was providential because that allowed me 
uh, from Langley Air Force Base in Virginia to come over and take uh, about a dozen J terms over the course of three years and was able to graduate once again with a master's degree from Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary. I would never have become a chaplain without Liberty University. My own denomination, when I explained to them that, that I, was, uh, I was finishing the education to become a chaplain, my own denomination said, well, the line is too long. Uh, you have to get in line, and you'll never make the 10-year the, the deadline that you have to have. And so I called up Lou Wider, Liberty Baptist Fellowship, and I said, Lou, um, God has told me this. Um, Apparently, they, they've told my denomination something else, and, and I think I want to believe God instead of my denomination. And Lou said, uh, here's the application. Let's see what God does. Well, God did what God always does. God made the impossible happen. I would never have uh, become a chaplain without Liberty University. I would never have become uh, a general officer without Liberty University. I would never have become the chief of chaplains without Liberty University. I would never have had the opportunity the last five years to serve at a sister institution, Charleston Southern, where I have lots of family and friends who I'm going to, to grieve greatly upon leaving them, but I would never have had the chance to serve at a decidedly, unapologetically Christian university, uh, a sister to Liberty at Charleston Southern, had it not been for Liberty University. When, when God began working in our hearts uh, to, to even ponder the possibilities, the impossible possibilities of coming back uh, to my two-time alma mater, to, to to invest our, the next season of our life in ministry along with this fabulous group of people here, um, I thought it would have been impossible, absolutely impossible. Uh, but, but, but God did what only he can do, and God opened a door, and we did what we have always done. We said, God, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever except for the fact that you've called us. And so we are overwhelmed, yes. Uh, we're thrilled, yes. We cannot wait to join this uh, phenomenal uh, body of believers who are doing exactly what Liberty University has always done through good times and bad times, training champion, champions for Christ. I stand here today as a Liberty University trained champion for Christ. Uh, and I cannot wait for Vicki and I to get here to, to invest our lives in others so, so, so they can go and do the same kinds of things that God has allowed us to do. And so God bless you all. Please pray for us in the coming months. We can't wait to arrive. Um, go Flames. <laughs> So, of course, this is a, uh, a press conference, and so uh, we, we have time for a couple of, uh, a couple of quick uh, questions. Unfortunately, it's going to be abbreviated because uh, uh, people have to get to airplanes and the board meeting, and uh, uh, there's a lot going on. But our senior vice, Liberty University senior vice president for communications, Ryan Helfenbein, is here. Uh, if you have a question and you're a member of the press, you can raise your hand, and then he'll, he'll find you. Hi, Mia Nelson with ABC 13. Uh, my question for you is, what do you hope to accomplish as the new president of Liberty University? Yes, I hope to do exactly what Dr. Prevo did. Um, not my own vision, but the same vision that Dr. Falwell established a long time ago. That, that vision, uh, when, he, when he laid out that vision, nobody but Dr. Falwell and God believed it was going to happen. And, and so I just look forward to uh, taking the baton and running as far and as fast as I can with a, a, a team of incredible people and trying to fulfill as much of Dr. Falwell's vision as I can and, and uh, with his help. And when the time comes for me to stand at this podium at some later date and hand the baton to somebody else, I suspect that person will say the exact same thing that the two of us have just said, because his vision probably will never be completely realized. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Rodney Robinson with the news and events. Um, I have kind of a two-part question for you, sir. Um, your uh, new position, you're transitioning from Jerry Prevo, um, and less than three years ago, uh, the transition from then-President Jerry Falwell Jr. 
do you think about that dynamic at all? And can you just talk about how you can, will try to continue to transition this university forward? I think about it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I am, I'm looking forward to doing, uh, again, exactly what uh, I've been called to do here. And um, I, I don't know what all happened before. All I know is I look around here and God has done some amazing things through some incredible people long before I got here. And as, as I stepped on this campus, you know, I, I made my first trip here in the late 1980s. Um, and comparing what I saw in the late 1980s to what I see today, God has used all kinds of people to do all kinds of things. And I hope that one day someone will say of Vicki and me, uh, not look what they did, but look what God did through them. Uh, any, any other questions? Hi, Christina Smith with the Liberty Champion. My question is for Pastor Falwell. With this change in leadership, what do you expect to stay the same, and what do you expect to change? Well, what's beautiful about this university is, as, as President Costin has mentioned, uh, things haven't changed. Uh, the mission and the vision has always been at the forefront of everything that we've done. Uh, going all the way back to day one, God has always led us to train champions for Christ. And so when you talk about what's going to change, uh, the only thing that will change is we're going to do that better. My dad always said, if it's Christian, it ought to be better. And so with that in mind, obviously, as the day changes, as time changes, as you know, technology changes, the opportunities change. And so we want to do everything that we do with excellence. We want to do everything that we do to bring honor and glory to Christ and Christ alone. He's the only one worthy of our praise. President Costin is not worthy of our praise. President Prevo, Chairman Lee, me, none of us are worthy. God is the only one worthy. So we'll do it better. We'll do it stronger. We'll do it with excellence, but always pointing to the one who brought us here, and that's Christ and Christ alone. Amen. And... We're, we're already beginning with almost a parting of the Red Sea because we have a bunch of uh, professional communicators and we're on schedule, actually, uh, which means we, we probably don't have any more time for any more questions unless it's something that's really quick. Anybody else have a one? one uh, no? Okay, once? Twice? Okay. So... Uh, uh, two notes. Uh, the, the first one is, if you do have additional questions, uh, make sure that you uh, get in touch with Ryan Helfenbein, reach out to Liberty University. There are lots of facts that you need to educate yourself on. You know, for instance, uh, Pastor Jonathan Fowell, I'm sure everyone will be very happy to hear, will remain the senior pastor of Thomas Road Baptist Church. Uh, President Prevo has a lot of work left to do, and he'll he'll be here until um, in, in his in his present role through, role through the summer. As will uh, Dr. Costin at Charleston Southern University. The, the transitions will take place on on July one. There are lots and lots of little details uh, in the press release and the story online. Avail yourself of all of them. Uh, and uh, if you are a, a executive of the university or a dean or a coach, uh, you should know uh, where a reception is happening in just a few minutes, and we want you to join us there. Thank you very much for being with us today. God bless you all.